Hello everyone, my name is Christian. Welcome to my hobby blog. Today we are doing the final review of the Vinegar Syndrome April package. So the final film that I watched by uh, Process of Elimination, it is the absolutely amazing film from 1989. It is Alien Private Eye. So as I said in my uh, unboxing video, I have seen this movie before, but it was five or six years ago, a very long time, on a really bad VHS rep, or rip, and oh my god, this restoration is so awesome, but it really highlights not the incompetency, but the very uh, low quality acting in this film. Because uh, this movie is just so baffling. Like, the dialogue especially is so bad. Our main character is this alien uh, private eye. That's what the title is. He's basically an investigator for the police department. And we find out that he's doing this as a vacation opportunity. Because um, he says that Earth is vacation city. And so... A woman just shows up to his office one day and it's like Lemro, because that's his name, is Lemro, uh, the most obviously not human name ever. But she's like, I need you to help me find the special disc. And it's not anywhere on the front cover, shockingly. I was just looking for it. But um, he's like, oh, where is it? Who has it? What is this? How did you hear about this? And he's like, just, it is so bad. The dialogue in this movie is just mad libs the entire way through. And it is so amazing. I forgot a lot of this movie. I remember the part where the other alien woman shows up and she, uh, while she's talking, you can hear the fan going above her because they stuck the microphone above her. I don't know, but... Uh, there's a point where she's like, if you get, you know, me the special iron disc, I'll give you 40 million criblets. And he's like, criblets? That's a lot of criblets. And this, <laughs> this is like so bad. Uh, I, this movie, there is not much to talk about. Um, I think my favorite part of this movie is that this very much falls right into place with champagne and bullets for me. In terms of the director and the main star just doing their best. And the um, non-leads, the uh, side characters are really trying their best. But none of it comes through. Uh, it all is executed so poorly. All the action scenes are not exciting at all. Um, the costumes of all of our different characters, we have... The, your normal Mad Max, like, punk uh, gang, I guess, who is who are trying to track down this special disc that's uh, equal to a thermonuclear device, is what one of the characters says, and one of the worst... I don't even... It's not even an accent. I don't know what he's trying to do. It's this very gravelly, rasp voice. And he uses it the entire movie, except for one part where he has to drink some water or wine from a, a different planet. And he just starts talking normally during that scene because in order to do that voice, I guess he has to be thirsty or at least have a dry throat because I don't know what that voice is. It was baffling. And I totally forgot about that too from my uh, first watch. But... Uh, this movie is so bad that it is awesome. I really enjoy this movie. Again, the action scenes. We have this super epic uh, final battle scene between uh, Lemro and uh, Skunge, I believe, is one of the punks. Uh, he kills Skunge and then fights kind of the head leader of the uh, gang. And it is so bad. It is so, so bad. They are throwing each other on... Uh, couches, on chairs, so there's no impact at all, or uh, I guess injuries to the people who are fighting. They do a really slow punch, and every now and then they do a really, you know, slow elbow hit, 
it is so unexciting is one way to describe it. But uh, this movie is so much fun. It is such a shame that we have this uh, laser gun here. And it's only used like twice in this movie. Uh, this cover here makes it look a lot better. It looks awful on camera. But uh, it looks pretty fun. <laughs> so it's, it's really hard to uh, give this movie any technical praise. Because this was just a random movie that uh, this director had made. And I did watch uh, one of the interviews on disc. I, uh, I, I saw that there was an interview with our main star, Lemro, who was played by David Hill. Uh, his nickname was Nico around this time, but uh, his interview was really interesting. Some of the things that I wrote down is that people at the time knew him as Nico the Dragon. Because he was in like an underground martial arts scene where uh, it was illegal to be part of this. And there were drugs all over the place, apparently. Uh, alcohol was constantly flowing. All this different stuff. And he said at around the time that he was just trying to make a living uh, doing any sort of odd job that he could. And so he was having a really bad... Uh, period of his life where he was just doing drugs constantly and he said multiple times throughout the interview that he did not think he would live to be 35 and when he made this movie he was in his late 20s early 30s so you can kind of see how dismal he viewed life at around this time and in the interview he states that he's 60 years old now so obviously he got past those challenges that he was having and I respect him a lot for that. So good on him that he was able to do that. Um, he had never been in movies before. Never even thought about it. He loved uh, and still loves uh, martial arts. And was always training. But never really viewed himself as someone who could do it full time. And one day he was reading the newspaper. And he saw a... A newspaper ad looking for a lead for a movie called Alien Private Eye. He said, what the hell? I'm going to apply. Sent them a phone call. Left his name. Uh, talked about how he had never been in an acting gig ever. He didn't know anything about acting. He just wanted to do it because he was having, you know... He didn't feel like he was going to be living much longer, so he was in a very fuck it attitude. And so he signed up to do the movie, and they shockingly called him back and hired him for the lead role. And he and a couple friends actually went out all together to uh, kind of apply and audition for uh, the lead. And one of his friends who plays the uh, kind of the sidekick that we see like once or twice he has like four different sidekicks throughout this movie but one of them he was friends with uh, outside the movie but he said the only thing that he had been in that could be considered acting was that he was in a wendy's chicken nugget commercial and he was kind of like yeah there the really, really wasn't much that i learned from working on that <laughs> that i could use for this movie and so i, I thought that was funny so i wrote it down uh how he went from a wendy's chicken nugget commercial to being the lead in this sci-fi action movie but uh after doing the commercial and auditioning he did the movie and he said that usually the lead is what carries the movie in terms of you know box office or even just you know making the movie everyone depends on the lead but he said that when he was on set he was heavily dependent upon everybody else he had no idea what he was doing he couldn't really remember any of his lines and so that's probably where some of his uh really clunky dialogue came from where he's like what when where how who you know all this different stuff was really simple and he can kind of follow along. But he said that all his co-stars were so wonderful. So supportive of him. 
And he said that he was, you know, very lucky that he didn't work for, you know, a shitty director who was very demanding and all that. The director for this movie, uh, apparently he was super kind, very patient. Uh, didn't really say if they went uh, over budget or not, because that is a regular occurrence for directors who are patient. Uh, that they always go out uh, over budget because they just want to have it way better than uh, what the studio wants. Because studio just wants to make money back. But he was talking about how this director was just, you know, take your time, do whatever, you know, do what you need to do in order to uh, successfully do your part in the movie. But, um... Uh, one thing that was interesting is that after he did the movie, his uh, mom actually committed suicide. And he said that from then on, he was heavily addicted to drugs, to alcohol. And he, he, uh, he said this was one of the big uh, kind of relapses that he had. Because before he had done the movie, he felt as if he was going to die at a young age. But he wasn't heavily addicted to drugs. And so when his mother died, he fell even harder than where he had been before. And he says that uh, he started to, uh, I guess, volunteer. He doesn't really, uh, I guess, explain how he came into this. But uh, he is now a really dedicated... Uh, dedicated and active pastor and chaplain nowadays where uh, he travels all over the country now to give prayers to people who are struggling. And he says he especially focuses on uh, people who are struggling in prisons, penitentiaries, uh, juvenile halls, um, hospitals for those who are uh, battling with the uh, chronic illness and he talked about how he's been doing that now for about 20 years or so and so since he was about 40 years old and he is going to get married soon and they have a very adorable little dog that he uh, shows in the interview named uh, Sophie it's a little um, toy uh, dog I don't know the exact breed but it's very cute so I was very happy to see the little baby. But um, that was one thing that I was wondering when I was watching this movie. I, I just really wanted to know more about this actor, David Hill, otherwise known as Nico, and kind of how he was involved in the project from the beginning. Well, not from the beginning, but how he got involved and where his life has taken him since because... He said that he was in 30 to 35 movies after doing this one. But I don't think I've seen him in anything else. So I'm unsure what movies he's been in. But I wonder if Vinegar Syndrome has also released movies with uh, Lemro. So this is a much shorter review than I was expecting, actually. But... Uh, we're going to finish it off now with what I usually do at the end of these uh, Vinegar Syndrome reviews and say, if I didn't have the subscription, would I have bought this movie? And I would say, yes, I would have bought this no matter what, because I'd seen this movie. I remember loving it. The slipcover is awesome. There's a bit of nudity on it, but uh, I can't show it for too long. Uh, we get a main star who is um, kind of dressed like Michael Jackson. And he does dance a few times in this movie. But uh, so far from the special features that I've seen, which is just the interview with uh, David Hill, I really enjoy this movie. Um, it comes with a whole new commentary track by the director, which is very rare. Uh, most of these movies, they just completely disappear. And mostly everybody who worked on these movies, they never even think about the movie again. So it is a treat that we were able to get new interviews with the star, the director, uh, the main actress, who is the love interest. I forgot. Uh, 
I don't think they have her name on the back, but uh, this movie is a lot of fun. I mean, it's definitely worth the price on sale time, which the Vinegar Syndrome half rate of Black Friday sale is coming up next, uh, coming up soon. And so this is your chance to get it. I don't know how fast this will sell out in terms of the slipcover, but I think they'll keep this in print for a pretty long time. And if not, that's a shame. Um, so yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching. I'll be doing the, uh, ranking of all three releases. Uh, should be pretty obvious how I'm going to rank them, but, uh, that's what I'm going to do. So everybody have a great rest of the night. Thank you so much for watching.